Hi, this is just a little review of how to find a polynomial when you are given the roots. Um, in this example, this is a review of what we saw um, from our earlier units. I think this was section 6, 2 maybe. And so when you're given roots, again, this is what the graph would look like. I knew that it was positive 2 because there's a positive 2, a negative 2, and a positive 3. And when you're given the roots, the first thing you have to do is be able to write your roots in factored form. Okay, so factored form, again, is where you would say, well, if I had x minus 2, that would give me the root, or the 0, remember those are the two same things, the 0 of positive 2. If I had a negative 2, then I would need x plus 2. And if I have a positive 3, then I would need x minus 3 as my 0. Um, and again, because they're called zeros or roots, we typically set this equal to 0. So this would be written in factored form. Many of the directions say that you should then write your answer as a polynomial. And when you write an answer as a polynomial, you write it in standard form. And remember, when you see something in standard form, that just means that you need to distribute, or as many of you refer to, you need to FOIL. So I'm first going to distribute the first two sets of parentheses together. So I would do x times x, which is x squared. I would do this x times a plus 2. And again, the order doesn't really matter. Then I would do negative 2 minus or times x. And then I do negative 2 times negative 2. So as long as I distribute to all the terms, I still have my third factor listed here. Um, I'm going to combine my like terms. Since those two are opposites, they cancel. And I'm left with now still pieces that are, this is again a factored form. It's no, still not in standard because we need to distribute the last time. So I'm going to do x squared times x and get x cubed. Then I'm going to do x squared times a negative 3 and get negative 3x squared. Then I'm going to do negative 4 times x, so negative 4x, and negative 4 times negative 3 and get a positive 12. So when it asks me find a cubic polynomial, it's cubic, that has the given roots or zeros, this is the standard or the polynomial form of or that will give me these zeros. So that would be my first example. Now what we've been seeing in the sections 6, 4, and 6, 5 is that our answers don't always have to be rational. Let me go back again. These are rational numbers because they're nice values that can be written as whole numbers or as fractions. Sometimes you're given um, roots that are um, imaginary or irrational. And what that means is if you're given a root and it says, says I want to find a cubic, well, currently I would have x minus 1. And then I would have x minus 3i. But notice, we know that if something's cubic, there should be three zeros. And we only have two listed. What happens when you have an imaginary um, root or imaginary zero, you will always have what we call the conjugate. You always have to make sure that you account for its opposite. They always come in pairs. So we're always going to have, if there's a 3i, you're going to always have a negative 3i as well because they always come in pairs. So what I've just done here is I wrote my zeros. Here's the x minus 1 to get me a positive 1, x minus 3i to get me positive 3i, and x plus 3i to get me that negative. I've written this again in factored form. You need to know what the names of the forms are because sometimes your answers ask for different forms. If it wants it is a polynomial, we're going to have to write it in standard form because standard form will write as a cubic polynomial. This isn't cubic right now. So just like we did before, you're going to distribute um, two of the factors together first. Now, I'm going to suggest in this situation, instead of doing the first two, that you do the two that have the two imaginary numbers together. So let's practice. x times x is x squared x times a 3i would be a plus 3ix. Looks a little different, but that's okay. Then I have a negative 3i times an x, and notice that would give me negative 3ix. And then I have a negative 3i times a positive 3i. So a negative times a positive makes that negative. 3 times 3 would be 9, and i times i would be i 
squared. So I still have x minus 1 out front. And what happens, again, very nice. We were worried about this before. Those two cancel, so I'm left with x squared minus 9i squared equals 0. Now what you need to remember from chapter 5 is that anytime you have an i squared, that is equal to negative 1. This is huge. Some of us had some trouble with that on their last test. So what that means is I have x minus 1. I have x squared. But this is really a negative 9, so minus 9, times a negative 1. It's not addition. There's no addition in there It's or subtraction. It's multiply because this is i times. So if I simplify that again, I have x squared. Negative times a negative makes that a positive 9 equals 0. Still not completely in a cubic distributed standard form. So x times x squared, x cubed, x times 9, 9x. Negative 1 times x squared, negative 1 times 9. And when we write something in standard form, remember we always go from the highest exponent down to the constant, keeping the negative signs with that value. So this would be my answer in standard form. It's a cubic polynomial. If I graphed it, it would look just like this. And these would be my three, because it's cubic, my three zeros. OK, we're going to do one more just so we kind of get this idea. So we know it's cubic again. We know that there should be three zeros. We note that there's one real and one imaginary, which means our third one must be its um, the opposite. We again call that a conjugate. So the first thing I'm going to do is write this in factored form. So that would be x plus 4. Then it would be x minus 4i and x plus 4i. Now I'm going to work on putting it in standard form. Again, standard form means that you distribute. I'm going to always suggest that you start with the imaginary ones first, because you'll notice that um, it will cancel out like it did before. But x times x is x squared. x times a positive 4i is a plus 4ix x times a negative 4i is a minus 4ix. And negative 4 times positive 4 is a, oops, is a negative 16i squared. Simplify, like we were doing before. We notice that those cancel. So we have negative 16i squared. We said, you need to remember from chapter 5 that i squared, oops, i squared equals negative 1. So this would be x plus 4 times x squared minus 16 times, it's times, a negative 1. So this is x plus 4 times x squared, negative times negative is positive 16. And now I'm going to distribute. So x times x squared is x cubed. Um, x times 16 is the positive 16x. 4 times x squared is a positive 4x squared. And 4 times 16 is a positive 64. So I get x cubed plus 4x squared plus 16x plus 64 equals 0. This is my cubic polynomial. It's in standard form. And it will have these three zeros, one of them being real, the other two being imaginary.